Hello everyone. Today I'll be going through a manufacturing optimization problem that has a couple of different types of constraints. We'll be looking at a scenario where there are five potential products to be built and we have a hypothetical deadline of one week from now. A uh, couple of things here. So we have a, um, a minimum demand or demand before a deadline uh, for each product. This is essentially saying these are the quantities of each product that are owed to our customers by the end of the week. Uh, these must be fulfilled um, in order to um, fulfill our contract requirements. You can see that each row um, has a, or I'm sorry, each product has a profit per unit sold. Um, and then there's also a couple of other items in this table. There's uh, the number of hours required to build each product um, through each skill level. In this scenario, there are three brackets of labor skill, um, skill level one, skill level two, and skill level three. And each product um, has a certain number of hours for each one of those labor brackets. So we'll need to take into account some of our labor uh, constraints. And additionally, we'll need to take into account some of our material constraints. In this practice problem, there's a constraint with microchips and panels. And we know that all other components, there's no shortages or constraints. Um, so we're going to include the material constraints, the labor constraints, and demand constraints, and try to maximize our profit as we close out the week. Okay, so the first thing that I've done here is uh, I've got a Jupyter notebook up and I've imported a bunch of packages, um, but for a project today, we are going to be using the package called Gecko. Gecko is a really powerful tool. It's frequently used in chemistry problems as well as uh, differential equations or calculus problems. It's a really powerful package, um, but for today, I'll be going through and showing how to solve an integer programming problem. Uh, so this is a frequently discussed topic in operations research, and um, so I'll dig into the code here. So the first thing I've done is I, I read in the CSV file that I saved from our Excel table. Um, you can go up to file here, download, and download the file as a comma separated values file. So I should have saved it as a, a better title, but um, this is reading in the table that we just looked at. So, and, and we can see that when we print it out here that it's exactly the same as what was shown in the uh, Excel shot, Excel, Excel sheet, sorry. Okay, so getting into the actual model. Um, so what we wanna know is how many total parts to build of each product. And so, um, because we want to make sure that we are producing um, complete parts, we don't want to have decimal values, and that's why we're using an integer optimization program here. We don't want to build 4.33 product A's by the end of the week. We want to build either five or four, um, and this, this type of model will ensure that we're working with uh, integer values at the end. Um, so what we have here is we're saying the total number of product A's built by the end of the week needs to be an integer value and its upper bound and lower bound um, are 0 and 1000. Um, so obviously we will not be making a thousand of product A because we're going to keep uh, the total quantity between the overall demand and the demand before deadline. Um, so this was just kind of slapped in there. It's not really important right now because our constraint will um, bind this even further. And so we produce this for each of the products and now we'll get into some of our constraints. So we want to build between, um, for product A, we want to build between two and five parts. 
Uh, we don't want to build more than the overall demand in this scenario. There could be cases where we would want to do something like that. Um, but we're going to put some rules in that tell product one, or I'm sorry, product A, which is represented by X1, to be less than the overall demand and greater than the demand before deadline. So in the end, we'll have somewhere between two and five parts built for product A. We'll have somewhere between one and seven for part product B, six and 19 for product C, and so on. And this is described um, in these sections right here. The next constraint that we're going to look at is the labor constraints. So for skill level one, we have a constraint of 240 labor hours. We get this because in this scenario, there are six operators who will be working 40 hours a week. And so essentially, we're going to look at the number of products built for product A times this value and continue to do that across the row. Um, and, and we need to make sure that that value is less than 240. The same rules apply for the next skill levels. So skill level two and skill level three. In this scenario, uh, we have three operators who will be working the 40 hour work week, which gives us the 120 hour uh, constraint. For skill level three, we have seven operators. And that gives us this 280 hour constraint for that skill level. Next, we're gonna look at some of the material constraints. Uh, so for the microchips, uh, we, on hand, we only have 2,500 microchips on hand for this week. And so we need to make sure that our optimization, uh, we appropriately allocate these microchips based on that constraint. And lastly, the number of total panels available is 400. Um, so you can start to see how some of these constraints are gonna impact our optimization. Um, and, and it takes it, its complexity to a whole nother level. But what's really exciting about Gecko is it can take into account so many constraints um, and, and create an optimization that's accurate, um, as accurate as the information that you put in. So it's a really exciting tool. Finally, we've got our objective function, which is to maximize profit for this week. Um, so we've taken into consideration our uh, demand constraints, and we're going to make sure that we fulfill our requirements for our customers. And when we look at our objective function, we're saying the total number of products built for product A times the value that we're going to be selling it for. Um, and we do that for each item in the table. And you might see that there's a minus sign here. This is essentially saying the minus of a minimization problem, which gives you a maximization. Um, I do believe with Gecko, you can put maximize or minimize in for this value. Um, and I had to tinker around with a couple of things and um, I just had it working with this minus sign. So don't be distracted by that. This is a maximization problem um, and I'll get into the results. So when we run this solver, um, we're also going to print out the, the quantity of each product um, and that'll be our optimal solution. So when I go to run this, Oh, we need to start at the top. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll just go down and continue to run all of these lines and it will provide the optimal solution for us. Okay. So let's interpret what this uh, summary tells us. Uh, again, uh, just ignore this minus sign, but we're saying that um, by the end of the week, we can have a profit of $39,900. And that is the optimal solution for this problem, as long as all of this information in the table is accurate. And so our strategy is gonna be to build five product A's 
six product Bs, 11 product Cs, 50 product Ds, and 14 product Es. Um, and so when we look at all of those values, they are indeed um, within these bounds of the overall demand. Uh, so that's just one way that we could check. Um, but we have high confidence that this was all um, set up properly, and we can make that decision now that by the end of the week, we need to produce these parts to maximize our profit. Um, so there's a couple of other things that could take this uh, a little above and beyond. We can uh, put a couple things in there to make the summary uh, easier to interpret and to kind of shine some light on some of the areas that were really hurting um, or restricting us from optimizing even further. Um, we could find that our our panel constraint is really impacting us and um, if we were able to somehow find another hundred panels quickly from a supplier we could um, potentially improve our profit um, a significant amount so I, I hope that you can see some of the opportunities that come from using um, an inter optimization program like gecko it's a really fun and exciting tool, a powerful tool um, that can take some manufacturing outputs to the next level. So if you have any questions about my, this code here, um, please do reach out to me. And um, if you have any other uh, fun projects that you think could benefit from uh, an optimization like this, please do reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk to you about it and hypothesize some improvements. Um, so thank you very much for watching this video and have a good one.